prepare to get a punch full of criticism on the next episode on the anime aspect. Episode 10 up next. In a world wrought with devastation, two unite into one to form a superior combination. One white, one black. This is their story of the anime aspect. Thank you, everybody. Welcome back to the anime aspect. I am Matt Swagger, your ambassador of anime in America. And with me, the ambassador in training, Brave Dave. What's up? I love the enthusiasm. This is episode 10. We made it. We achieved greatness. We unlocked this achievement of 10 episodes. And to quote the great Matt Hardy, the seven deities has shined their love upon us and graced us with this beautiful episode of One Punch Man. We actually sat down, watched the entire season, which is only 12 episodes. <laughs> yeah. But we did it. We promised you back in our early episodes that I'm not going to just shit on the show without giving it a real good run through of the episodes. And I said to Brave Day, I said, you know what? As the ambassador of anime in America and you being my little training ambassador, we need to go ahead and give this full depth review. We need to sit down and painstakingly go through each episode as much as it might hurt our brain and our eyes. And we're going to tell you what we thought about it. I don't know, Brave Dave, did you want to share some of your insight first? Um, yeah, sure. I mean, <laughs> I think my level of enthusiasm matches the character of uh, Saitama in this fucking show like, right now. <laughs> okay. Like. <laughs> that couldn't be more <laughs> appropriate. <laughs> I don't necessarily understand why this show is as popular as it is. <laughs> it doesn't deserve. And I'm not saying it to knock it. Yeah. I... Listen, I didn't find myself really rooting for anybody in this show. It's it's impossible to root for anyone except maybe at the end when you got the Class S warriors fighting it out. And that shit just threw me off. It was... It's, I, 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 I got confused by the whole Class S, Class A, Class I'm, B, Class... I'm going to go into all that shit. And just, this is like uh, an amalgam. Again, we yeah. all know this is a parody of all the anime shows. Right. And don't... Don't think that we're ignorant, please. We we know this. We know it's a parody. We know it's poking fun at anime. I'm not just too thrilled about poking fun of anime, being my stature in this industry as the ambassador of anime in America. I don't think that this show warrants the critical acclaim that it's getting because it's, again, it's a parody. It's like Weird Al Yankovic doing coolio's song <laughs> you know it's like, like back in the day it's it's funny and it's it should die away peacefully and unnoticed as it fades into the black now i'm going to get into my points and there's a lot of comparisons that i've made and i'm not going based on what other people compare this to i'm going strictly on matt swagger's fucking point of view here so i got a lot of yu yu haka show from this i got a lot of a lot of bleach dragon ball z there's a lot of it in there you have this one character that's basically byakuya from bleach saitama is the opposite of ichigo and goku basically it has no apparent love for anything but bargain shopping because he's a bum he is a bum he <laughs> was sick of work just like we all are decided that ah i hate the nine to five i'm not gonna do it anymore i'm gonna go and do a hundred sit-ups a hundred push-ups a hundred squats and run what 10 kilometers 10 km whatever some shit like that yeah i don't like what the fuck and become this indestructible force to be reckoned with like when he had, <laughs> when they were in the House of Evolution, 
and his little disciple wannabe Genos, the cyborg that that looks like Ichigo, that has no personality, but in a way learns to get more of a personality than Saitama has. Which is interesting, being that, that he's a cyborg. That character was such a waste to me. Yeah, they, Fucking Genos. What was the point of that character? They, they, it's just, like, it's poking fun at everything the anime is. Right. And when he's about to reveal, like, how did you get so strong? Oh, my God. It's like, that, that scene with that ravaging what carnage what was that fucking beetle looking thing's name what is that what is... I, I don't fucking know it was some shit yeah what they're all monsters they're all like fucking there's a king of this a king of that i like what the fuck is this but... it didn't really matter at the end of the day because they were just gonna go down with the one punch yeah this... it was so hard to get yeah, invested into any of when, this shit when when he's saying that he did the 100 push-ups 100 sit-ups all that shit 100 squats turning you know not having the air conditioner on he's he has no money that <laughs> That's why he couldn't have the air conditioner on. They had the fucking sign here that says save money. He doesn't have money. He has to have coupons. It's like it's like a poke fun at fucking life. And that's where I see that people like it. Like, we don't fucking outright hate this show, this manga. We don't. It's just <laughs> it doesn't deserve the spotlight that a Bleach, a One Piece, Death Note, Full Metal Alchemist, Brotherhood, Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball Super, Fairy Tale, even Attack on Titan. I really don't get what is so appealing. You got this guy that fights. No, he doesn't even fight. I shouldn't even say that. He just stands there, lets the enemy just get exhausted, and then he just punches them to obliteration. To just fucking destroyed. How again, like Brave Day said, how do you root for Saitama? Like, hey, like how do you put your fucking your energy behind him like you would a Goku and Ichigo? You know, any other character like in Yu Yu Hakusho, Yusuke Yurameshi, you how you know, these are people, these are characters that fall down, that bleed, that get killed, that come back to life. And here is a guy that did basic strength training as put by his disciple in there which was hilarious screaming at him telling him he's a liar he just did basic strength training and he's he's this fucking invincible guy and another funny part is when Genos was telling him why are we running I thought you could fly and he's like you know humans can't fly but you can fucking jump from the fucking moon back to earth you can run like the flash you can go through the ground like you just teleport it there and get that little mole guy with your face <laughs> it's like it doesn't fucking add up you can do all those incredible superhuman things but you can't fly yeah yeah <laughs> it well here's the thing i'm not against the premise i kind of like this idea that this regular guy <laughs> gains these fucking powers and he's kind of like he kind of has like a very lazadaisical yeah. <laughs> approach to everything. Like I actually dig that part about it, but I don't feel like they went far enough with that. <laughs> I feel like you get a little bit of that, and then they want to squeeze in the monsters and all this and that, and then <laughs> it's just again like there's a way that you can write a character like that. And <laughs> I can't stop laughing again. Yeah, so there's a way that you can write a character like that and have the audience root for him. Yeah, but I don't feel like the writers were successful in pulling that off. In my opinion, I don't, I think this was done by design. I think that well, yeah, they they just wanted to poke fun at everything so much. Like the only like decent hilarious character was Puri Puri Prisoner. Yeah. <laughs> he was so fucking on target for. <laughs> what his character was portraying and it, it, it was it added some lightheartedness and humor to a somewhat dull show at points but the introduction of the the association reminds me of bleach with soul society you have the squads the 13 squads you have the different classes so not only you had 13 squads you had a captain for each squad you had a vice captain and you had the lower seated members right so you have class S, you have class A, class B, class C, and then you have the ranks. So that reminded me of Bleach right away. And then you have, now you're talking about the classings, 
Yu Yu Hakusho, the demons were classed in rankings of C, B, A, and S, I believe. So I believe that element is there. Some of the fight scenes reminded me of the final battle with Yusuke and the Demon King. And a little bit it felt like it with Ichigo and Kenpachi. It was a lot of different feels that I got from this. And during the end when you had the again the S-Class Warriors fighting that clay guy that reminded me of Envy from Full Metal Alchemist with all the dead people from back in the day when Homunculus in the Jaw became father, became the Philosopher's Stone, had all those people absorbed inside, that there you have that element. You have Silver Fang who looked like Dr. Giro from Dragon Ball, the Red Ribbon Army. There's a lot of similarities with the show. And again, yes, we know it's a parody. And you can appreciate that this guy, he's coming up with these characters, even though they're making fun of other ones. And just brings the point, Atomic Samurai, he's across to me between Kenshin, Samurai X, Moroni Kenshin, and Shinsui from Bleach. <laughs> it's, it's like everybody is poking fun at someone from a popular anime. Right. And it just, it doesn't make sense to have these classes, these warriors in in place because Saitama is indestructible. And for them to shit on him, which is the great irony in this thing, no one recognizes him, so you have that Naruto feel. So he's not acknowledged by his peers He's not acknowledged by the villagers, the citizens. So he wants to be acknowledged. So let me join this hero association. Let me register. Instead of being a hero for fun, I'm going to be a hero for profit. I'm going to be a professional. It's just because he wants everyone to know that he's the one defeating these monsters and not the Moomin Rider, which is a fucking joke. I'm a guy that rides a bicycle and throws the bicycle at people. Reminds me of the Ninja Turtles back in the day throwing the garbage cans at Rocksteady and Bebop and shit. It's like, that, that character was funny. It, it was fucking crazy. What, what was the other character? Uh, was it uh, Tank Top Tiger? Yeah, Tank Top Tiger yeah. and Tank Top Black Hole, the brother. Yeah, you know what's funny? I think, <laughs> I think a series about those two would have been more interesting. They had more personality. Yeah, but that's what it comes down to. But this again... And and here's the problem, right? So you have this character of uh, Saitama, and then you have the character of was it Genos? Genos, yeah. None of those those two do not play off well of each other. No, it's kind of you, you know what I mean, kinda like bland and it, just... it's it's very bland with those two. And it's just like, come on, man, give me a character with some real personality. But this this the deal with Saitama. He's always losing his cool for some stupid shit. It's like he wakes up from a dream screaming, don't you dare come at me with a booger on your finger and want to play rock, paper, scissors. Yeah. It's like, what the fuck? That's what you're dreaming about, brother? Yeah. You're like, you're this force of nature that can't be stopped and you're dreaming about a guy who wanted to touch your hand with a booger. And like I was saying earlier that he's the opposite of a Goku of an Ichigo. You know, typical anime characters, they love to talk. They love to just stop in the middle of fighting and just like, hey, shoot the breeze. And talk about how strong they are and how you know how much to hold them back, how much power they're gonna let go, how much they're gonna show you. It's like kind of sizing each other up. And what show is famous for that? Dragon Ball Z. So it's funny seeing an anime character that doesn't want to fucking talk, that yeah. he's not interested in what the fucking enemy or even colleague is saying, and that I like. I like that. I because. In a way, he knows that he's this strong guy. He just doesn't give a shit. At the end of the day, he's going to punch you in your face and explode you. And <laughs> I kind of like at the the last battle when he's fighting the the fucking the pirate boss, whatever his name was, Barros, I think. And he has this regenerative ability, so he couldn't really kill him in one punch. Right. But again, that's, that's not really... Saitama's fall in a way so he thinks that maybe oh I found someone stronger than me yeah the dude was super strong but he, he was able to regenerate almost immediately right so he at one point he completely obliterated him and the guy just like focused his energy and just came back in a second it was like even faster than what Piccolo could do so at the end when 
you see everything's being restored and da, 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 and there's this other fucking monster that comes and he just explodes it and he's like crying yeah, back to one punch again ah! like you always been yeah. one punch bro it hasn't changed that guy you just faced had regenerative abilities so right. like it's like the opposite of goku goku always wants to get stronger because there's someone always stronger than goku and this guy it's like he wants to become weaker <laughs> Yeah, Saitama is not the most determined character. No, he's like, just like fucked up in the head. <laughs> yeah. Very relaxed and cool and well not necessarily cool, but very relaxed. And I I again, man, Something I, I wrong just wrong with him though. <laughs> I really I really could not root for the character. You can because you know he's not going to lose. Right. You there's, see he got he got knocked to the moon. There's nothing compelling about him. He couldn't breathe in space. He was holding his nose. But he didn't get the blood and the eyeballs sucked out of his body from the vacuum of space. But he's there standing there chilling, feeling the the moon rock. Like he's like admiring. He's like, yeah, cool. And then he just fucking jumped back to Earth. Didn't get burned up coming back in into the atmosphere. And he's like, whew, I made it. Like, dude, (laughs) like it's like how how can you like get nervous for him? Right, like and, you, you, and that's the fun of shows like this. Yeah, you, you know? want to get behind the main character. You want to, you want to have that emotion. If if they're in trouble, you get nervous. You get like, oh god, I hope he doesn't die. Oh my god, please let him get the upper hand. Let him win. Like, dude, you got this enemy going all out on him, and he's like, he didn't even give his full effort. He's like, okay, and that was it. The poor guy died, and he's like, you had power to spare. You're incredibly strong. Like everybody says, he's incredibly strong. He doesn't even care about being incredibly strong. He just wants to find someone stronger than him, and he can't. So he bitches and moans about that. Like I don't know if that was me. I'd have the ego as big as anything if I could punch anything and destroy it, man. I don't know. That's me. But we get the appeal. It has to be for a lot of people that haven't watched classic anime. They don't understand that this is really poking fun at like all the great classic shows that came before it. And it's watchable. It is. It's it's a moderate show. Mediocre at best. There was some laughter in there. Yeah, it was laughter. You know. There was decent animation at some points. I don't care how they change... How his face facial, looks. Yeah, that bothered me. Like, it would get more detail. Like, he, should, he should always be detailed and not look like this, this doofus. And then he gets cool looking when he wants to say something cool or he's angry. And then his body's very loose, no muscles. And then when he's doing a punch, he's like this muscular, you know, typical character that you would see. Much like uh, Ikaku from Bleach. Bald, ripped, very muscular, lean. And it just goes back to like he's wearing his onesie and his little clipped on cape. It's it doesn't make sense. And I don't know it's because I grew up with classic anime. Yeah. And like I watched it. I got through it. I wasn't looking forward to keep continuing on to each episode. I could tell you one thing. I watched it in Japanese subtitled. I did watch an episode in English on Toonami recently to see the comparison, if they changed the dialect, if they changed any wording around. Did they? No. Pretty much, every, not much at all. If anything, a little thing here and there. Everything was pretty much from Japanese and they did it in English. Yeah. Because some you don't even see the mouth move on some characters at some points when they're talking, so it was very easy to to insert the original dialogue even when the mouths were moving, they still did it and made it. It seemed to work. So Viz did a decent job, I guess. Like I didn't like Geno's voice in English. It was odd at best. I think Saitama's voice was a good choice. It was very a generic voice. Like okay, yeah, Just very like that. very kind of stoic as well. And um, Geno's it. Geno's think, was like oh, I think everything was wrong with that dude. Saitama sensei. That's how his voice sounded in English. Like his voice was cool in Japanese by. F- by no means should it suck in English, please. So I don't know if it's like, I think I would change it on the second season. No one would really notice, hopefully. Make, get a cooler voice actor yeah. to do Geno's voice. 
liked, you know, I don't know. Season two, it took almost two years. Eh, maybe you do something a little better. I don't know. I don't read the manga. I'm not going to read the manga. And I'm not telling other people not to do that. Well, that's how this whole thing started, right? Yeah, like cause... there was like some dude who decided to make his own web comic. Yeah. In Japan, and, and it that's, kind that's of that's fucking awesome. It kind of took off, went viral. Uh, a professional creator saw it and said, "Hey, can I reprint these and and draw new panels and you know you know what I mean? Like it was more <laughs> of your typical trying to make it look better, right? I mean, <laughs> it's like. The artwork that the creator possesses is not the best. Um, I do think with this news that, uh, I don't know, dude, it's, this fucking show has me lose my train of thought. It's just, <laughs> this, I was just so unimpressed by, it. <laughs> I had to fucking sit down through 12 episodes of yeah, this bullshit. and I though. watched them all. In a row. It took three and a half hours. And I did it. Shit. I had to do shit in between, man. I, I had hey, to get up and do stuff. My ha- hat's off to you. I'm not wearing a hat, but if I did. Yeah, I got you. Off. <laughs> uh, that's what I do for, you know, my love of anime. I made a promise. I fulfilled it. And now I'm letting you know what I fucking think about it. Yeah. It just, I didn't become absorbed into it like anime should have you. And I'm I'm fucking happy for anyone that that does that for, because you found something that you like, and it's an anime. And I hey, great man, and that's not what we're here about. But I'm just telling you as your ambassador, like you should really go and look at some other stuff to appreciate the art, the story, the characters. This is what it's about. If you're looking for some cheap thrills. And I don't know, maybe just to laugh when you're drunk or whatever, that's fine. But I wouldn't put this on the mountaintop of fucking like where One Piece is right now and where Dragon Ball is in history, Bleach, Death Note. Like, I know I'm saying like the top stuff, but this is what's in Shonen Jump. This is what helps Japan's economy. So you got to understand. Uh, these I mean, are, these... there's there's something about this property that seems to appeal to other people. Yeah, and, and there's I mean, nothing this should, wrong with that, dude. I've had so many people come up to me about One Punch Man, <laughs> about uh, was it um, Titan, Titan, Attack on Titan, Attack on Titan. Yeah, you it's probably I mean? something we have to watch next. Yeah, because I haven't really I seen maybe part of an episode. I mean, I just don't get like these giants eating little people but i don't know right. i gotta i gotta check it out more i i know the concept i know that the main character he's like half titan or whatever he by himself and turn into one and so he, i just know the movie in japan sucked and which is sad and when their sh- own shit sucks whatever there's something we're gonna have to that's a bridge we're gonna cross when we get there yeah you know uh but um let me just think a little bit more about one punch man here it's uh well, I mean, do you think this... I mean, so they've already been greenlit for season two. Yeah. Do you see this property getting even bigger than what it is now? I don't... What else can they do unless... They've done everything in, like, the short season. They had all these... Like, they had all these monsters. They had the Deep Sea King, which is, like, the one of the better enemies. Yeah. You had all these underground ones. Like, how many kings are they underground... You got these guys from the 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 fucking air that look like bird dragons, kind of look like junk junk rat from Overwatch. One of them, it's it's like you had all these kings and all these different kind of animals and beings and monsters. Then you had the aliens, so they kind of hit like everything, and like but it's either mutants, alien, monsters, and then you have the hero association. You have this ranking of heroes and. Did, oh my right. god! What what else could they do beyond this point? How did you feel about? How did you feel when the Heroes Association was introduced? Like, I kind of feel like that shit just came out of nowhere. It was that left wing? It was like, yeah. Oh, if you want to be recognized, you have to register with the Hero Association. Like, where did this come from? Right. Like, you didn't see any like indication of that. There's other heroes, right, in the world. There. Oh, and another thing, like every city's fucking an alphabet letter. Like, City A, City B, City Z, City J. That's fucking lazy. Right. 
that's just some lazy shit right there. And that's another thing that, like, this is, yeah, it's a parody. Like, you, you, it takes too much thought and creativity to think of a fucking fake town. Right. Come on, man. CD, how horrible does that sound? Oh, man, CDA, CDJ. I don't like that shit. And then where, again, where is the indications that this is the hero of this city, this is the hero of that city? You don't hear about that at all. I think they just added that shit and, like, he ran out of things to write about. Yeah. And, like... It, it, that's what it seems like. I mean, shit was coming out of left field. <laughs> character... I mean, it was just one new character being introduced after the other. Um, and that was taken away from our main character. You know, like... I felt like the series should have been dedicated to developing Saitama a lot more. I felt like he was under underdeveloped. You yeah, know, and this, throughout those twelve episodes, still no one likes him except he has the respect of Silverfang, and of course Genos. Other than right. that, really, no one else gives a fuck about him. Yeah, they are very indifferent towards him because of his look. He's this bald guy that wears a onesie. With kitchen rubber gloves yeah, and yeah, boots yeah. and a cape with two big buttons on it. He kind of looks like a, a Sesame Street character hybrid. And uh, How do you... Of course, how would you get respect? Like, yeah, a lot of those fucking heroes are fucking ridiculous, too. Yeah. You got Metal Bat, Metal Knight, fucking child prodigy or what was it child emperor or some bullshit like that it was a kid sucking a it, lollipop yeah and i don't know man it was just some weird and that, fucking that, shit. that feels like it was a a dig at full metal where i th- i believe in the first adaptation the fuhrer's child was a ch- as a kid but he was a homunculus he was young but formidable because he was a homunculus I felt like they were making fun at that because he was a kid. He's supposed to be powerful. But there he is. He has the Waldo, like Spider-Man, where he's walking on the spider legs. Yeah. So they, now they're, they're incorporating fucking American shit here with Spider-Man because he's small. You could take that as like he's Gizmo maybe from Teen Titans. So they're poking fun at his size, but they're trying to say that he's intelligent, blah, blah, blah. Like, that doesn't, that doesn't entertain me. Like, I don't want to see a kid... Like, what the kid really do besides look at a computer? I, did he do any actual fighting? I don't know. I, I don't, don't know think what so. The fuck he did, I don't man. think he did anything. And then he had the psychic, that girl, with barely with any clothes on. She was like the only fucking hmm. kind of intriguing thing there. She was pretty useless, too, which was sad considering her prowess. Uh, the octopus telekinetic fuck in the alien spaceship. Pose no threat no. whatsoever to Saitama. Yeah. You thought that was going to be like a legitimate threat. Yeah, and then that he turned can crush out to you be, with yeah. the telekinetic powers. He's just sitting there picking his face. He's like, hmm, what a waste of the telekinetic powers. You're just throwing pebbles around. And he, to us, it looks like he just lightly throws this rock and he just shoots that shit like it was a bullet from a gun and just annihilates that octopus head. I'm like, really? Really, and anyone you really enjoying this shit? Like this, this is not what we need. Shit goes by so quick. How much shit went down in twelve episodes? It felt like how they even make that days. Like the, how things happen. Like people complained that fucking Goku and Frieza had the longest battle ever. I think that's fucking amazing that you had such a fucking an awesome battle that spanned episodes. Because you had character development, you had dialogue, you had all this great shit going on, and action, suspense, building. That's the real key here is you had the suspense. There was no suspense. There was nothing. You know that he was going to kill this guy. What do you get out of it? Right. I mean, there was no anticipation because (laughs) you knew what was going to... You already knew the result. You know, like... And I think that's why I really couldn't get excited for this series. Like, again, I didn't hate it. I kind of like their approach in a way. I think they could have gone a lot further with it. But in terms of me rooting or even giving a fuck if somebody lived or died, I'm like, whatever. Yeah. And, it, and then it started to feel like the series became less about him. It's, it felt like it was started to become more about other people. So it, I'm it like, felt like it was more leaving? about Genos. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So At some points, it did feel like yeah. that, yeah. 
and how the house of evolution just went out the window the fucking that genius guy genus he just stopped doing his evil schemes and he had his little pet gorilla that he rebuilt and they like fucking had their little maid apron on and they were cooking at the end and shit like what the fuck happened with that yeah like that was a promising thing. I thought that was going to continue on. That's kind of like the Red Ribbon Army in a way. That's kind of like a Doctor Giro shit. Like, oh, you got this guy. He's bent on fucking taking over the world, evolving humans into other shit. That had promise. It just out of nowhere because, oh, uh, I gotta get out of evolution. Like what? Because he does push ups and sit ups. He told you. So you're gonna you were an old man and you gave yourself fucking youth and you gave yourself clones. I'm sure you at one point you could become immortal and you're gonna stop now because he did a hundred push ups, a hundred sit ups, a hundred squats, and ran ten kilometers every day for three years. Hmm. And, oh yeah, and didn't have air conditioner on in the summer and no heat in the winter because he's cheap. So that that's what made his hair fall out, by the way. Starving himself and putting himself through extreme fucking trauma. Yeah. Not because he became strong. No. It's called malnutrition. Look it up, people. <laughs> malnutrition. <laughs> so, I take it that you really did not like this show. I, I mean, neither did I, so I really don't give a shit. I, but. I really... I. No, I don't like it. I'm sorry. I was, I I'm was, not sorry. It's just I was bored. Yeah, it was, was kind of not exciting. It. Yeah, it was a couple of comedic moments in it. I'll give you that. Yeah. Decent animation at some points. Like the last fight scene was pretty cool. Yeah, it was all right. Yeah, but Saitama didn't do anything. It was the one guy. And then when he did that fucking that serious punch, whatever he called it, like, oh. like you, you weren't being serious, like. Your consecutive punches, your normal consecutive punches weren't working, so you had to do that one big serious one. Like, like that was boring. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, again, I just don't understand how the fan base of this show has grown they as much as it did. They think that he's better than Superman. Nah. Like, how he's made, how right. he's designed. Yeah, he. I don't think Superman would win. I don't know. If... There's no way of ever really knowing, and it's never going to be canon, and it wouldn't matter anyway. Right. But you have this guy who's indestructible. Superman has weakness, kryptonite. Who's to say this guy don't have kryptonite if they have a battle? So I was watching this fucking series, <laughs> eating breakfast, eating lunch. Yeah, it's like consuming like, your time nothing's for fucking, nothing. Like, I was like, <laughs> God, nothing's happening right now. Like, I could and- be watching... Yeah. Like I could be doing so much better. I could be rewatching Death Note <laughs> or checking out another cool anime. That, I'm like I could have wrote my own book. You know uh, what I, mean? I could continue writing mine or my pilot for yeah. a TV show. Uh, but yeah, it's like I invested <laughs> three and a half hours into the show. See, I don't know how the fuck you watched this shit straight. I couldn't do it. I did. Yeah, yeah. I fucking couldn't do it, man. I had to. I had like, to get it. I had to watch get it this over with, bullshit man. gradually, dude. Like, I said, if I don't do it, I'm never gonna do it, and I'm not gonna be a man that goes back on his word as the ambassador of anime in America. That's not something that I want. I don't want my integrity questioned. I sat down. I did it, and <laughs> I really. I don't know if I'll watch season two. Probably to just do another show about it. I don't. Uh, I don't think I'm gonna really sit down for season two. Like I'm not. I'm just not. <laughs> like I'm not gonna be. Let's say I'm not gonna wait with bated breath and a ribbon I mean, around my neck listen, waiting for it. But there's <laughs> there's literally thousands of anime out there. Yeah. And, and there's I, stuff we haven't seen that's good that we can actually put our attention to besides this. Yeah. I, I, listen, I've what so far I've watched less than one percent. A fucking anime, yeah. like zero, like point zero zero one percent of fucking anime. I know. Like, there's a ton of other shit that I need to watch in place of this bullshit. So, <laughs> like, yeah, when the if you think I'm gonna fucking stick around for season two, motherfucker, for what? Like, <laughs> dude, when the fucking deep sea king punched him in his head, and his head went like a bobble fucking yeah. head. It was like this is a fucking joke. This guy yeah. destroyed Genos, like in like nothing. Yeah. And he just punches him and is like hitting a bobblehead. And then he just hits him and he completely destroys him. There's just, uh, there, there's like no It's real... like, how are you that strong? 
There's like, just no imminent threat like, that can make this shit interesting. Like, like if he would have hit Goku, he would blow up Goku in that world. Right. And Goku's fucking on god level shit. Right. That well, tells and, you how like pompous this shit is to have this one person that has all this power, but it's great that everyone fucking hates him. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, it's, it kind of evens itself out in a way. I don't know. It's but just, it's it's. And that was a problem problem that uh and this was a problem that, you know, creators of Superman had for a long time. Yeah. Is that he was just too damn powerful and he became less and less interesting. You know. And that's why they still fuck with him to this day. Right. It's and like, ruin him and make him uh, I mean, non appealing. I've heard some good stuff about um the rebirth. The rebirth about how they kind of brought it back to basics with him. Well, they brought back the the pre New Fifty Two Superman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, that was the one. That was one from the eighties, right? Yeah, they're digging him. Yeah, they're digging him, and like I don't think. But apparently, they're bringing to... back another Superman. So oh no, and he has the black suit. You know how DC is. They're yeah. gonna find a way. Oh yeah, they're bringing another black. Superman back. Oh yeah, like all this. I'm listen. I'm not that interested in a character having all this unlimited power. No, because it's stupid. Is it? There's no story to it. How are you gonna ever have any fucking kind of balance? There's no balance, and that's what it comes down to. Good versus evil. You have to have a balance. Not all the time the good is gonna win, and it kind of gets boring. Yeah. When the good guy always wins, like, let's take one of the, the greatest sagas in my opinion, the Dragon Ball Z, the Cell Saga. How fucking awesome was the Cell Saga? How powerful was Cell? Goku couldn't beat him. Goku knew before he fought him he couldn't beat him. He just did it to assess his power, to let Gohan see how Cell fights. That's intelligence. As dumb as Goku appears, he's extremely intelligent mm-hmm. when it comes to training and fighting. Yeah. He just doesn't care about shit that his wife cares about. And, hey, <laughs> that's why I love Goku. He is a genius when it comes to fighting he knows his son has that hidden ability that can level up to level two and go just a tad beyond where his power is <laughs> so in a way he used his son but he knows that he could do it he sacrificed his life so he died this is one of the most powerful beings in the universe died by an exploding fucking bug okay here you got Bobblehead. <laughs> you can't kill him. Bobblehead. You can't kill him. And there was a point where he's trying to catch that mosquito that was looking like Goku and fighting someone. How it was going, the phasing in and out, and then like, like he got annoyed that he couldn't. Like you're this all powerful fucking being, you couldn't catch a mosquito. See, this is where the, the fucking shit falls flat. He can destroy these big ass powerful, powerful enemies. That like mop the floor with regular heroes yeah. that are supposed to be S class, A class, the best of the best, which is trying to teach you that classes and rankings don't mean anything. It's just politics and shit like that. I get that whole thing, all right. But he couldn't catch a mosquito. He <laughs> slapped the shit out of the mosquito girl and blew her up, but he couldn't smush a tiny bug. Like what the fuck was that? And that was that was like well you could take that as the comic relief of that episode. Yeah, yeah I yeah. think it was more him being fucking naked and slapping the shit out of that mosquito girl. <laughs> but this is what I'm talking about. It's there's just so many fucking contrast, and it happens so quickly, and it's just he's so weird, and he says things without thinking. He's like, oh, what what I why did I say that? Yeah, he is a weird fellow. Very weird. I don't know if that. There has to be more than what he's saying with this training, even though he said it's all I have is strength training. It has to be more to him than just that strength training that he went through to make him this powerful. It has to be. I mean, I guess they're going to try to go into more of that stuff this season. You have to because there's nothing else. Right. What other enemies are you going to introduce? Is there another alien out there that's going to come now because they hear the tales of Saitama? We have to come and fight you. And this whole prophecy shit. Like, oh, you just heard of a prophecy now, and it, and boom, he heard of the prophecy 20 years ago. How's that even add up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are we trying to do now? Add time element into this? 
time travel you heard that it took him 20 years to get to earth they just found out now this lady just died fucking choking on a cough drop which is fucking hilarious that was fucking hilarious she got a cough popped the cough drop and choked to death on it the irony hmm. ladies and gentlemen thank you that was fucking great i like that uh but see you are giving this series some credit th- hey again this points to it as fucking funny and this points that extremely fucking stupid but choking to death on a cough drop when you had a coughing fit is fucking hysterical. <laughs> it's hysterical. I wish they would have showed a fucking cutscene of her fucking choking to death on it. That would have oh, been man. worth watching all the 12 episodes for. But the big fucking, the big prophecy, the earth is in trouble, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> so fucking vague. And it's going to happen within the next six months. So we need you trapped inside this building. You can't leave because we don't know when it's going to happen. And here comes Baldy. Well... You said it's going to happen in the next six months, so that can mean today, or that can mean tomorrow. Oh, you're right. I'm glad I came. Like, and there goes the, the change in the face. Like, I'm a real anime character now. Like, yes. Yeah, that shit got fucking annoying to me when they kept doing that shit, bro. Like, <laughs> And then they brought the manga in when he's there just watching the guy power up, and he had the little wave lines and the, the bubble with the okay. Like, okay. <laughs> Straight from the manga on the anime. It was like... You're breaking the fourth wall, kind of, you know, just doing some fan service. That's what people liked about him and like about him is that, okay, like nothing phases him because, yeah, we know you're all so, powerful. So it doesn't make, it doesn't warrant to have a manga in a show in the first place then. It should so, end. So why do you think this thing really took off? I just, I just can't figure it out. It, it has to do with him being like the anti traditional anime character right it's it's a change in pace from the long out blown out conversation with your enemy he, i'm not interested get to make it your point in 20 words or less it's like he, he has no attention span he don't want to talk is he's too busy thinking about what coupons he needs to clip and his favorite supermarket that got destroyed right and he, that the, the whole battle with that fucking carnage guy when he blew him up he realized this is what his great epiphany was hearing that in his rampage mode it lasts a whole week he's and he's like and the guy the monster said i'll be like this till next saturday so he's like saying so if he so if he's gonna be in this rampage mode for a week and he said that saturday is gonna end that means today is saturday and today is the mega bargain sale at the, my favorite supermarket. And they're like, ah, and he just punched the fucking lights out of that thing and exploded into pieces. And he's there fucking crying like fucking Jean Claude Van Damme and Bloodsport. Ah. Oh, after uh, the salt got thrown in his eye? Yeah. Ah. One of my favorite moments in it. He's like fucking crying, shaking his head. Frank and then, Dukes. He, and then he goes to meditate. Like, ah. But that, like, that's fucking, this is what's going through this dude's mind when he's fighting this fucking menacing looking fucking foe. He's going to miss the mega bargain day. And then he has to be calmed down by Genos. Well, master, the store closes at 10. That's another four hours. If we can hurry, we can make it. So he just blows a hole in the wall and they just start running for it to make it to make sure he gets his bargains for his groceries. And then when that kelp monster, what, <laughs> what the fuck, was it Sonic chopping up the, no, it was that mustachio guy, the guy with the mustache that had a fucking sword and like, oh God, yeah, <laughs> like, Jeez. like the captain from Bleach, Foxface, he fucking cut up all that kelp and he's like, hmm. Genesis is like, oh, so you got some kelp or whatever it was? Or kanubu, they call it? I don't know what the fuck. It was some kind of lettuce shit. Yeah. He's like, yeah, I, I picked some up on the way home. Yeah, from the fucking floor, you cheap bastard. <laughs> You're so thrifty, aren't you, <laughs> fucking Saitama? Is it, and, and, that's, <laughs> and, and I think that's the only aspect of the character that I actually like. Yeah, because that's that, like, he's like real in that sense. Yeah. And then Genos made the point, yeah, it's very good for regrowing hair, but it's not really proven. So, <laughs> like, you're a fucking downer, boy. Yeah, I mean, pretty much. You try to poke fun at he's bald. And then if you're doing this to regrow your hair, I think that's the last thing on Saitama's mind that he's thinking about. Mm, this is going to help my hair grow back. 
You, feel, you Do you feel like once he grows his hair back that he's going to lose the powers? You think they're going to tie the two together? Oh, that would be funny if they do that. That, I, I, that should I, make it interesting. But I think that's where they're going with this shit. You think so? Yeah. I he's really been bald for three years, though. When When's his hair going to grow back? How long has he had the powers? Three years. I That's what I'm saying. I think it, it ties together. So how it takes another three years for his hair to grow back? Well, I mean, listen, he could probably just walk, walk out the shower with a full head of hair. That would be you, funny. You know how this show is fucking running at this point. We'll like, see. That's, they can literally do whatever they want. It's like the want. reverse of Samson back in the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Can you imagine like, that shit? How dumb that would be? I, I could and totally And people would eat that up like they're being fucking spoon fed. Yeah. Oh, my God. I totally see that happening. Because this is the kind of show that <laughs> is not really taking itself seriously. Oh, and then he has to go through some super secret training now with probably Silver Fang or something. And... He has to reclaim his lost power and become even more powerful. Imagine this shit. Oh, my God. One punch. Yeah. <laughs> One punch to put me to fucking sleep on this fucking show. One punch of solid sleep will do you justice watching yeah. this show. Yeah, dude. So there's no season two for me. Don't expect <laughs> us. Don't expect us to fucking review that shit. No future review for One Punch Man. I don't. I don't know, dude. Like the if he grows his hair back, will you get on the microphone? I'll, will you listen? I'll get on the fucking mic and, and, and lay claim to like I'm. I call that shit. You know they're gonna but, steal our ideas now. Yeah, exactly. We want credit, I mean? or we're gonna fucking sue you for listen, copyright. I want credit for shit that I didn't even fucking create. You Everything know? on this show is copyright protected, baby. So yeah. if it's coming out of our mouths, it belongs to us. So. I don't know, dude, man. This <laughs> fucking show, bro. Like, I, like I said, I didn't. I'll probably, I, I'll probably piss my pants if that happens because it's like, oh, Dave said that shit. Like, that I, is fucking hilarious. I see that shit. Because you know they're going to have that episode where he loses his power. It has to be. They, they do that to Superman to like every year. Yeah, they, they do that to all the fucking heroes. Goku, like, too. He spazzed out in Super. He lost his ability to control his key. Yeah. So he, he kind of lost his power for like a couple episodes. So if they could do it to Goku. They could do it to Superman, who's been around since the 1930s. They're going to do it to your boy, Saitama. And it's probably going to make you love him even more because he's going to be back to his lame self (laughs) and then do some real training. And let's see if he can gain some muscles. All right. Let's see if he goes, works out with Puri Puri Prisna and get jacked up and do some angel poses and take his boy medicine. Do you see this thing like... That fucking he was, that guy was fucking hilarious with the fucking Sailor Moon transformation. Oh, and just dude. his clothes came off. Yeah, it was it was f- fucking that be, was good. Beyond disturbing, by the way, it but, was. Uh, but it was, it was like old school fucking Dragon Ball Z design of him. He looked like f- yeah. a cross between Nappa and Raccoon. Like at this point, with with the popularity of this of this show, do you see this thing getting like a live action adaptation one day? Oh my god, <laughs> like. I I could, and I could it, totally see it, and it would work so well because it's a fucking mess on the fucking anime. So I could just see them just putting some ragtag shit together, and it will work. Like they'll have a guy that has like one of those fucking things that make him look bald. I could see him just having that, and oh, you yeah, see yeah, it's yeah. like totally fake. Like it's a spoof on the anime. Right. I could totally see that shit. I see, it, like an man. SNL skit. Yeah, I I could see it. Oh, I yeah. could definitely see it. You know, it's... Now watch them spoof this on SNL because we're talking about it. Know, uh, that came out of my mouth. So I want I want to be on the show guest host. SNL? Yeah, I would love to you be know, on. I would love to be one of the fucking people on SNL because those guys suck. Can I be honest with you? I've never really been an SNL guy. I'm, I just, I love improv and I think I would do a better job than all of them on there. I respect improv. Um, Except the one that just won an Emmy. What's her name? Oh, the Kate girl. McKinnon? Yes, McKinley. McKinley. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't. I'm, I'm right up there with her in terms of my comedic and improv abilities, as well as my voice acting and my great way of talking centrally into a microphone. Thank you. Yeah. I've never really been into it. I haven't I been into it since, you know, the good guys left, like Eddie Murphy, Adam Sandler. That's like Chevy fucking... Chase. What was that, 88? Jimmy Fallon, Will Ferrell, the guy that bobs his head, you know. Oh, for that, for that for that whole skit? The Mongo. What's his name? Was it the Mongo? Or they did that movie, like, the Rock, yeah. Night of the Roxbury. Yeah, that shit, shit was great. That shit. Was, it, was, it, was it really a great movie? 
It was fun. I liked it. It's like a shit movie, but it's an, it's an, a glorified SNL skit. So it went from being a great movie to a shit movie? It's a great shitty movie. Yeah, if you All like. Right. At least you're being honest right now. <laughs> Richard Grieco, you see right through me. <laughs> <laughs> Richard Grieco, holy shit. <laughs> what a reference. Well, he was. 21 in, Jump Street. He was in it. And that was, then he got the spin off and did his own show, Booker. Booker. Shit you was know. good. Booker! Anyway, King shout Booker. Out, shout out to Booker T, man. Six times. Six time WCW champion. Thank you. I thought it was five times. Yeah, but then he won the uh, in in the E, so he's six time. That bullshit didn't count. Well, he still his Twitter handle is still five times book. <laughs> oh yeah. So he probably don't even count that shit either. Shit. Book of TV. Love well, and, and five time has just like a better ring to it. So. Of course it did. Five time. Spin a Rooney, baby. Oh man, One Punch Man, you you do you suck. You do not do not deserve. The attention and the acclaim <laughs> from fanboy and fangirl like I think that some seriousness needs to come into play. And instead of becoming a parody or continuing to be a parody, it needs to become an actual manga anime. And we need to see some balance. And we need to see some development. And we need to see some creativity and some originality. <laughs> You know, uh, Comic Con's in a few weeks. Yeah. Uh, can you imagine the amount of One Punch Man cosplayers you're gonna see? Probably not a lot. <laughs> I, 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 think, I don't think I've seen any. I, well, maybe one. Well, if you think about it, I see. I think I've seen a Genos. Maybe I don't. The and show maybe got a Saitama. The show got pretty popular in the last year in the states. Yeah. So I think if you go to Comic Con, you should at least. Run into about six one point. Let, let's wait for Anime NYC next November at the Javits new anime convention, baby. That's coming to the Javits Center from the original creator of the New York Comic Con and the great man that headed up the guests in marketing and promoting for the New York Anime Festival, Peter Tatara. We're gonna see another anime in New York City that we can call home. Yeah, that'll be that'll be fucking awesome, man. You know, oh yeah, we I need mean, more fucking conventions and shit. So, oh yeah, you'll you'll definitely see One Punch Man cosplays at anime conventions, not so much the American comic conventions as much as you'll see Deadpool, oh, Harley I mean, Quinn, Joker. The, the Batman, Deadpool shit's getting so old. Flash, like you, it's like, oh. yeah, like everybody wants to be Harley Quinn now. Hey, Mister J, you look at me. I got my baseball bat. You want to rev up your Harley? Like it's been yeah, done you, to death already. You're, you're gonna you're gonna see a lot of Harley Quinn. Yeah, you're gonna see it with Suicide Squad. You're gonna see everybody now going to be Deadshot because of Will Smith, which did an excellent job, by the way. I have to say, and I've said this already on camera and on microphone. He he really thinks, in my in my opinion, he he was the standout of the fucking movie. How do you compare him to the to the to the Deadshot that was on Arrow? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> I th- <laughs> <We can't laughs> Arrow, please. Oh, that's man. the fucking toilet of the DC TV universe. Listen, listen. Come on, man. That that's not even a valid question. Just like One Punch Man <laughs> season two, Arrow <laughs> season five, I will not be watching. Boycott. I, I Arrow. I, <laughs> this that's the only thing we'll probably tell you not to fucking do. Do not watch Arrow season five. Yeah. Make them feel it. I, I just I, I can't do it anymore, with Arrow, bro. Like it's I'm over that shit. You know what I mean? I I know. Oh uh, man. I'm looking forward to fucking Flash, baby. Yeah. I can't wait to watch some fucking Agents of Shield. Yeah. Luke Cage. Luke Cage. That's baby, right. that shit's coming. You know who's gonna be talking about that shit. The brother. Brave Dave and your boy Matt Swagger. We're gonna be talking about that on the Rogues Gallery. We're gonna get that shit out to you. It's and we're going to let you know how fucking awesome that shit is. Because I can already feel it in my fucking bones. Wu-Tang, Method Man, all the shit I grew up with going to high school. Watching The Box. If you all remember The Box on regular fucking TV. Yep. The Box. That's yeah. how we got to see our fucking music videos if we didn't have fucking cable. We had to sit and watch that until a favorite fucking song came on. So that was the struggle. Okay? And then when you had fucking cable and MTV used to play music. I don't know what the fuck MTV is now. It's they should change it to RTV for reality because they don't even fucking put any music. 
No, no. They so, haven't had music on that <laughs> channel. Like the, because you, you have MTV1, you have MTV2, Two, yeah. MTV3. Ugh. But in terms of main MTV, they really haven't um, played yeah. music in close to maybe about 15 years. And that's sad. And you know what? I think we need to go back to basics. Put some Beavis and Butthead back on. Let's let's pretend it's the '90s still. It was a better time in the '90s. I think it was a lot more MTV, fun. MTV was fucking amazing in the '90s. Yeah, we gotta. There was a lot more realness in the '90s. It was a lot less PC bullshit sensitivity in the '90s. You were allowed to say what you fucking felt because you're a fucking American, and that's your freedom of fucking speech. And if someone didn't like what you said, they told you go fuck yourself, and that's what <laughs> you do. Because <laughs> you have your opinion, everyone's entitled to it. You shouldn't have to tiptoe and walk on eggshells because you might offend someone everyone's offended by something i'm offended by when someone farts next to me i pretty sure you are too (laughs) but you know what i'm not gonna go and crawl and die in a hole because of it i'm gonna say you fucking stink get the fuck out of here man (laughs) god have some fucking manners some etiquette go in the toilet and do that shit (laughs) got got a little tart there (laughs) a tarty fart little toot I mean, I hope it wasn't a shart like Vince McMahon did back in the day. Oh, man, dude. I can't stop sharting, bro. Like, <laughs> I don't know what the fuck it is I eat, man, but it's like, shit. <laughs> the shart attack. Yeah, that's what the show's going to be called soon if we keep talking about it. Yeah. <laughs> the shart attack. Yeah, that's that's be my new Twitter handle, the shart, the shart attack. Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> hey, at least I'm fucking honest. I don't give a fuck. It's a, little, a, lot, of, it's a lot more creative than some other bullshit that's out there. That's fucking great. So, to sum this up, and the only way that Matt Swagger and Brave Dave can do this, One Punch Man sucks. <laughs> gets one punch of suckness from me. It it just didn't do it for me. I'm sorry, everybody. And I know there's a lot of people out there that probably feel the same way that we do. I'm not sorry for shit. <laughs> I'm being honest. I'm just I'm just saying, man. I know a lot of people are not gonna like it. But listen, listen, if you like One Punch Man, all fucking power to you. Yeah, exactly. I'm just saying we're, I did not like it. We're not telling you. I know. I don't know how many times we said it. We're not telling you not to watch this. We're telling you not to watch Arrow. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> don't watch Arrow. <laughs> that show's fucking. Terrible. I'm sorry, Stephen Amell, but yeah, your show, your, your show sucks. It's not your fault, but they. I don't know what what they fucking do into your show. They turn it into a toilet bowl. Don't know, but you like One Punch Man. You sincerely, sincerely love this show, and for some reason you think that it is like the bee's knees, man. I don't, I don't know why, but I'm gonna put you on the list of swagger right now. As to, I think you need to go back and look at some classic shit, okay? And then get back to us and let us know. Do you still think One Punch Man lives up to the fucking hype? It didn't live up to the hype for me. It had its few moments of comedy. It's few moments of irony, but when you have an indestructible hero, it's boring. I think I think the hype is what ruined the show for me. I think I would have enjoyed it a lot better if there wasn't all this hype. Yeah, surrounding it would it would have been better if it was like an underground shit like anime used to be. Like, oh, there's this there's this low key fucking anime that's amazing that's not getting all the critical acclaim that let's say uh, a mainstream anime on Shonen Jump would be getting. That would be more appealing than having heard all this fucking critically acclaimed fucking shit. Hearing everyone rave about it like he's the fucking next god and he's better than Goku and Superman. I didn't see that. I saw a lot of fluff. Yeah. I saw a lot of... I saw a guy, really... That couldn't think up of his own idea, so he decided to make fun of other people's shows and characters. Characters that I hold near and dear to my heart. Stories and characters that I fucking love. And I really don't like seeing them fucking poke fun at. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Being ambassador of anime, you have to respect the culture. You have to respect what anime means, where it came from. That show really doesn't do it for me. <laughs> it doesn't show any respect to the great writers and illustrators that came before. It's just this guy that didn't want to work for someone else. 
He wanted his own show. That's great. We all want that. We all want that in life. We all want our own thing. We want to be successful. That's why I'm doing this show. Hopefully, fucking one day, someone knocks on my door and says, Hey, Matt Swagger, we want you to do a voiceover job for this show. We want you to go and host this event for us. Yeah, yeah, that would make my fucking day. Will it ever happen? Probably not. So, until that time, you got to stick with me. And I'm all you got. What if it's Vince McMahon asking you to join the, the Kiss His Ass Club? I probably would kiss his ass to get a job. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> Hopefully he didn't shard at that moment. Hey, man. Hey. We're, we're part of a unique club. The sharders out there. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Vince McMahon came to me and said he wants me to work for him. I have to kiss his ass. Yeah. I probably would fucking put some chapstick on. <laughs> Pucker up. <laughs> man, I was let that man. Thought. Let that man do some tricks. That man is ripped, and he's seventy-one years old. Fucking God bless him. And he's a fucking racist motherfucker. <laughs> fucking old, out of touch man. But you know what? He gave us what we have today, and hopefully Triple H puts a little visine in his water and puts it, him to sleep early. What Vince McMahon gave us is still a lot better than One Punch Man. So whatever. Really hope that you enjoyed this episode as much as we did having a great laugh about Saitama and One Punch Man. At your expense. This is a disclaimer. We do not wish anyone to hate this show. <laughs> but if you do, leave a comment. Let us know if you don't like it because then we can share in the laughter with you. <laughs> and if you hate us for hating your favorite show, One Punch Man, we've got two words for you. and on that note for brave dave i'm matt swagger thank you so much for tuning in on episode 10 your one punch of hate and for your amusement we are going to sit down and tackle attack on titan on the next episode of the anime aspect